Can we talk about this AC30 again real quick? I, I just, let's, let's talk about it. What up, this is I from Ask Out Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. And I owned the AC30 before, but I sent it back. I don't know where I left off, so let's talk about the AC30 from Blue Eddy. Why I returned it and why I'm thinking about grabbing it again. A bit of note, I bought the GoLabs R300 first because I was most impressed with that set of features in comparison to my Bowden's 166. I found myself sitting around thinking like, man, am I tripping? Because I've always been focused on pulling the most solar in from the sun. And back then I had very small but capable devices. So I wanted to try out the Blue 80 AC30 because the main thing with that device was that it could charge at 150 watts of solar. Now I always put quotes around that because when I had the device, I didn't have the type of tools to verify that, but it it has some real drawbacks. <laughs> Let me just start with that. I did a video about the AC30 a while back. I'll post it up here. You could check that out if you want to. I did a couple videos. I compared it to the GoLabs as well um, about like which one I should keep, which one I should return. I ended up keeping the go labs r300 because i just i really like that device they are both lipo but I, this is not about them i did a video about that already you could check it out so the ac30 the reason why i'm revisiting it is because it goes for 199 dollars. it has a plethora of shortcomings plethora it does not come with the solar cable it does not charge from 12 volt it doesn't have a usb pd port on it it just has like an 18 watt dip on it. It doesn't show input or output as it relates to that screen. <laughs> the screen is pretty much useless. So yeah, it, it pretty much sucks as a device unless you have a very specific need. I happen to be one of those people who has that very specific need, which is I want something that's LiPo, charges from solar, has an eight millimeter jack, and gets a good amount of solar and is less than $200 or around $200. So I've been really thinking about that because right now all of my small portable power stations outside of my beastier ones, they are all maxed out at 60 watts of input from solar. So that means if I hook it up to a 100 watt panel and that panel's putting out about 80, 85 watts, I'm losing out on 20 to 25 watts from that panel. And I feel, I hate that, I hate that feeling. Because of that, I'm using my old Rock Pals, which takes in 80 watts, which is why I got that one, because I want to get the most power from the sun as possible. Now, I can't find a device that pulls in 100 watts of solar, costs $200, and is life pole. I can't find one. There's, uh, there was the Watt Fund for a while, but as soon as I got interested in the Watt Fund, it was um, the price history had it as low as 199. It may have even been a little bit cheaper, but it was at like 250 or 220 or 230 or something like that. So I kind of wasn't sold on that. I also didn't necessarily have $200 to spend, but I was kind of looking for something. Um, and then all of a sudden that fell off the face of Amazon. There's the Kusla, which is pretty much looks exactly like the Watt Fun LifePo uh, device but it has mixed reviews. And that's literally the only device that's around $200. I think that one's like 250, 240, something like that. That's the only device that is comparable to the AC30. So I've really been going back and forth with whether or not I wanna buy it. I went to go watch a couple videos on it and there's not really a thorough video on the device like showing it performing certain things. Now that's no knock on anybody. I make kind of like first impression videos, but at some point you wanna get some see what it's doing kind of stuff. Because that screen doesn't show you the input, then I would have to use my clamp meter. Now I have a clamp meter. It's bugging out a little bit, but I still got one. So I've been really tempted to grab one lately. I really wish they would update that device and put out a new version of it because that would be even more compelling at the $200 price point. So if I'm gonna spend $200, I'll get LiFo. I'll get maybe about 120 watts of solar input. All of that's great. But because the dip doesn't have any really useful ports, I mean, it has an AC port. I think the inverter is about, I won't guess, I'll just put it down here in the corner. It has USB-C, but it's trash. But I could add USB-C through the 12 volt adapter. I'm not crazy about those cigarette lighter adapters because sometimes they fit snug and then sometimes they don't fit snug. I haven't had that happen to me in years. Maybe I was buying cheap products back then, but I don't know how I feel about spending an extra 30, 
$40 to add 60 watt charging or 100 watt charging to that device. It's like at that point, I wonder if I should just wait out for an EcoFlow River at the $250 price point. It's not LiPo, but it gets in up to 200 watts of solar. And then we start dealing with that whole to 80%. And it's just like my whole goal is not necessarily to store that power. It's to be able to get as much solar power in to be able to pump it out into other power stations. That's why I'm thinking about that AC30 from Blue Eddy. So what would y'all do? Would you wait for the EcoFlow River to hit like $250 and buy that one? That one's not LiPo. It has a 100 watt output from PD. It takes in 200 watts of solar. It has a proper inverter. It has a proper screen, not even a proper screen. It has a really good screen. It has three ports on the AC output. I mean, it's like a 5521. I don't know if the AC30 has 5521 either. It's just such a weird device, but it could work for me. And I'm, I'm tempted. Solar world problems. <laughs> All right. So I apologize.